The Global Cast showcases SFU students' diverse stories, a podcast that fosters inclusivity by sharing in intercultural conversations, opportunities, and fun segments with our SFU Global community. We want to start by respectfully acknowledging the Squamish, Sailwatooth, Quiquitlam, and Musqueam peoples on whose sacred, unceded, and ancestral territories we are recording today. Our second episode is a continuation of our conversations with the peer program coordinators from International Services for Students. We talk all about how one can get involved on campus with Emerald from the Global Community Peer Education Program and Issei and Colin from the Global Connections Program. I kind of want to talk about the differences, you know, what, what is the difference between the Global Community Peer Education Program and the Global Connections Program. What are the differences um, that students can directly experience? I know that peer coaching and peer mentorship and peer education is a term that was thrown around a lot. You know, if you can kind of touch on what the, the differences between those are and if that relates to your program at all. I, I will jump in on this one. I think yeah, there's a lot of peer blanking, yeah. <laughs> except peer mentorship is the one odd man out there. But I think it really comes down to where most of our interactions are with students. So the Global Peer Education Program fo focuses on peer education. So we are interacting with students in almost a transient way. Students come into the programs or interact with us in our various platforms where we're doing work and we're focusing on providing that education. Interacting with students, potentially maybe a student comes in and they're like, hey, I've had this struggle with school and the peer edu educators may be in a position where they say, oh, hey, here are health and counseling resources, but they don't have an ongoing relationship with that student. It's more of, hey, come in, we're gonna teach you about this and we're gonna be a leadership role in the community but not directly interact with you and support you on an ongoing basis yeah so i think you covered what uh, peer education is pretty thoroughly um so i guess i'll talk a little bit about what peer mentorship is so a peer mentor is somebody they're a friend who can listen they guide and refer you to the right place for resources so they're trained on kind of you know what there is around sfu for supports and helps there's someone you can turn to um, and trust, and they're kind of a student leader and a positive role model. What a mentor is not, they are not a counselor. They are just another student. They're not an advisor, so they can't directly help you with course planning, but what they can do is revert you to the advisors who can help you. So they know where to point you, but they can't do it themselves. And similarly, they can't help you with any sort of like immigration documents or visas, anything like that. Um, they will be able to refer you though. And they're also not a teacher or a tutor, so they can't help you with their homework directly. But again, they can refer you to stuff like the Student Learning Commons um, or any other resource that may be helpful. And within the Global Connections program, you have the option of being matched with a senior student one on one, and they can be the consistent person that you go to. And you don't have to be part of it, but it's always always a great added um, option and it also allows you to have a bit of a social time and to mm -hmm. meet new people in a low barrier environment. Yeah, and our mentors are all like super great people, super fun. Yes, yeah, yes. we work with them pretty closely and they're, they're all great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, they're already great, but they also just want to get greater and better. And that just makes it so much more wholesome. And it makes our job, both Collins and I, is just a whole lot of fun and but a big part of how those mentors are getting better is peer coaching, which is available both in the Global Community Peer Education Program and also with us with the Global Connections Program, where we ask volunteers and we ask community leaders what are some of the goals that they have. And we go through those and we make sure that the opportunities are available for them to work on the specific skill set. And we guide them through it, we talk through it through it about them, we make sure that they're realistic 
<laughs> and uh, that there is something that there is some personal development or some professional development that is happening throughout the term. That's something that's very important to us because um, when our volunteers are benefiting new students or students who are fairly new to SFU so much, we also want them to take something out of this program that's on top of the experience, um, a better understanding of their own skills and a better understanding of the development that they've gone through and they are still able to go through. In my experience, it's been just pretty nice <laughs> and very rewarding for both parties. I think in the Global Peer Program, very similarly, we really focus on the professional and personal development of the peer educators in the program. Mm -hmm. So regardless, we have an option for people to opt into peer coaching where the Global Peers work with the Intercultural Engagement Coordinator to work on some kind of personal and professional goal they have where we have ongoing meetings talking about setting up that goal, identifying barriers to achieving it and strategies to address those barriers. And we meet kind of three times throughout the term to check in on that goal. And sometimes it's specifically related to the program, but sometimes it's not. The really huge, wonderful thing that I love about the Global Peer Program is that it's focused on providing kind of peer education and programming services to the general student body at SFU, but it's also really focused on supporting and developing the global peers. So sometimes people who opt into peer coaching, they want to work on a personal goal that doesn't specifically relate to the program. So maybe they want to work on their coding skills and we can have a conversation and are willing to talk about that. Regardless, even if the peers don't opt into peer coaching, we still kind of sit down with them at the beginning of every term and try to identify what are your goals with this program? What are you trying to get out of this? And what can we do to support you with that? And then throughout the term, we try to create those opportunities so that they can work on that. So some people wanna work on their public speaking skills. So we create opportunities where they can host events or someone wants to work on their social media and graphic design skills. So we create opportunities for them to work on Instagram promo, that kind of thing. So even if they don't opt into peer coaching, we still work to support them in their development. Uh, when we talked about you know peer coaching, both programs they have that element with you know with personal professional development that everyone mentioned. You know whether you're interested in you know, social media, whether you're interested in event planning, that that's where you know both programs they bring bring those interests of the students together and really work on it um, as a team. Just to recap, then the peer, peer mentorship is something that the GCP or the Global Connections program you do more of, and that's through the community leaders. And the peer education uh, is on the Global Community Peer Education Program, as it says in the name itself. I know that there's also been you know, a question that a lot of students have is with everything being virtual online, you know, what kind of events do both programs run? In person, I've mainly experienced the Global Peers um, events. So that was a lot more on the education part. We had some um, cooking nights, which was always such a good time where a cult certain culture would be highlighted and people would talk about that specific culture and then um, work together to prepare a meal, which everybody would be sharing at the end of the, of the events before going. And that would all take place in the Global Student Center, which um, will be reopened one day. I know it. <laughs> We're just crossing our fingers. Um, but I guess when we moved online, we really, we really saw that social connection was what was lacking. Suddenly everybody was a little bit more isolated in their own place, in their own apartments. Um, they didn't have as much access to talk to fellow SFU students in a casual manner because classes have a tendency to be very formal, which doesn't allow for more natural connections that the human being is better at creating. <laughs> um, and so when I was still an intercultural coordinator, um, what we were doing was mainly on the social side. So creating that space, that open space where people could just show up, have a good time, have a laugh, see another human being that wasn't like, oh, did you answer question three of a tutorial assignment? Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of things are <laughs> quite appreciated every once in a while. So as Isu was talking about, um, and even in the feedback that we got last term was people wanted more space to just 
chat with other people like not really like super structured like people just wanted more time in breakout rooms or just more space to be able to talk to people i'll speak a little bit more to you about the kind of the difference between our different global peer and global connections events mm -hmm. it what our events are really depend on the kind of the group of global peers that are in the program because it's really similar to global connections it's really student run so whatever the peer educators are passionate about is usually what we do as long as it relates to the program this year we've had a lot of themes i think related to what colin and izzy are talking about with people just wanting to chat and have connections this year a lot of our events have been focused on making those connections in a way that facilitates intercultural learning so there has been a lot of story sharing events creating space for people to talk about their different cultures and backgrounds and have a really wholesome time connecting and learning about each other but the main general difference i think between the two programs is that global connections and you too you can correct me if i'm wrong but i think it focuses more on social events and events as a whole but the global community peer education program focuses on programs so we say events informally but really it's some kind of program, either an event, a social ca media campaign, a workshop, anything within those spectrum focused on, it has some kind of educational goal. There can be socializing and chatting, but it's really focused on doing something that facilitates learning. So there have been language cafes talking about different, learning about different languages. Like, as I mentioned, we've had cooking cooking nights where people come in and learn about a different culture in their food. This term, there was a really cool opportunity for the global peers to work on a Canvas course related to adjusting to life in Vancouver for new students. So they had the opportunity to edit the content in the course and provide feedback as well as help moderate the course and connect with people on Canvas discussions. There wasn't a lot of discussions because I think everyone is tired of Canvas discussions in a virtual environment, but the global peers had a really fun time connecting with some of the people. We had some discussions based on what's your favorite food or do you have any restaurants that you really like? And they were able to connect with other students about all these things and also provide recommendations like, oh, you like salad rolls. There's a really great place in Vancouver that has great salad rolls, that kind of stuff. So it was really, it was a really cool opportunity that I don't think they've done before in the global peer program. Thank you for sharing, you know, what the difference is, you know, clarifying, you know, what what are the two programs? What are they different? And also the, the exciting things that you've been working on uh, this year. And so I have a few frequently asked questions. This, this segment, you can call it the too long didn't read speed Q&A. Uh, so these are just questions that are frequently asked about the programs. And so I'm just gonna shoot them at you and feel free to answer. When then talking about the two programs, which program then are you when you volunteer or when you're involved in it, you're a peer educator or a peer mentor? So you're a peer mentor when you're part of a global connections program and you're a peer educator when you're part of a global community peer education program. But you can join the global connections program and not become a peer mentor. You can be a mentee if you so desire. Yeah. <laughs> The Global Connections program is um, has volunteers, but is a membership program as well. And then, then what are the commitments for volunteers in each program? You know, how if they are interested in getting the co-curricular record, the CCR, how can they go about that? In order to receive CCR as a volunteer in the Global Connections program, you need to attend two events um, and also be in good standing with your own team, depending on what kind of team you chose, because those are skill um, related, which is a detail that you can find on our website. Check it out, <laughs> wink. Um, and as a mentee, as a member to get um, CCR for the Global Connections program, you just need to attend free events and um, send us a little bit of a checklist with some of the learnings that you've done or some of the things that you've taken out of this event and we'll be able to keep the CCR. Yeah. Um, to add on to the volunteer requirements, um, there is also uh, training that needs to be completed. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there's meetings that you need to attend monthly 
and there's also mentorship. Um, so there's just a monthly super short like report that'll take less than five minutes that you just need to send us monthly. Um, and then, yeah, those are the main pieces. For the global peer program, we have a two, in order to get CCR, you need to have a two term commitment, which is 35 to 40 hours per term. We generally say that looks like two to four hours a week, but it really depends because weeks that we have trainings or events, you are typically putting in more hours and weeks that we're just planning, you'll be putting less, but average two to four hours a week, two terms, 35 hour to 40 hours per term. But you don't have to do that in order to be part of the program. We have students who have joined us and been like, I'm graduating next term, can I still join? 100% you can still participate as long as you have the 35 to 40 hour commitment in that term. You just won't get the CCR credit if you're only coming for one term because you have to graduate. But we prefer that you come for two terms because it helps the program to work with one team throughout the year. And lastly then, uh, is there any new or exciting updates from both programs in the upcoming year or semester? For the GCP at least, we're changing a little bit the way it's gonna work and we are introducing skill-specific teams instead of uh, polyvalent teams so that as a volunteer, as a community leader, you can enter the Global Connections program and either focus on event planning, marketing, and social media or outreach, which um, depending on what you want to do in your future, depending on your own professional development, might be beneficial for you. Of course, that doesn't stop you from benefiting to gaining some facilitation skills and some public speaking skills because you will still be required to attend to events and to help facilitate both. So beyond what is going to be available to our community leaders, we're also going to have our events continuing to be online. We'll still have events throughout summer, which we usually didn't have. So if anyone's looking for opportunities to have some social time during the summer, we'll be there for that. We also have our Discord, which is open to all of our members. And the cool thing about our Discord is that we're going to keep it and it's going to be continuing so that previous members are still going to be able to access it and they're still going to be able to meet new people coming in and we're kind of hoping to create that space for everybody to meet each other beyond just you know school and academics because we understand that not everybody is always on Burnaby Mountain. That's great. Well, thank you all three of you for introducing the both programs uh, and if anybody who's ever who's listening have questions or are interested in volunteering in the programs, please contact them and I'll leave their emails in the descriptions. And we also have a website where if you want to learn more or read more about the programs, it's all on there. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Global Cast. If you have any questions you'd like answered by us or want to let us know what you'd like to hear in the next episode, leave us a message on Facebook or Instagram at SFU Global Community.